So this is Anthony and this video is on the 902 with a floor scale. So this just fix your error 6 or any kind of calibration. So first and what you should check is always the feet. So if you see these holes you can actually put a flathead screwdriver and you make sure all the corners are leveled. So you could actually check each corner is not wobbling. You check all the corners it's all leveled and make sure the feet are not screwed all the way in because you need some travel in the load cell feet to actually calibrate properly and you'll start checking the cable itself and you run your hands to the cable check for any cuts or smash in the cable because that cuts or smashed could actually be your problem and give me the error six so if you're here and this is just gonna use my body weight for example but you know turn it off and the tricky part is is actually getting into the menu so while it's turning on you're gonna hold down the hold and units button at the same time so I'll show you so while it's counting so he's gonna stop sequence and you'll see cal so this is LB on here so LB is for pounds but if you want to calibrate in kilograms and that will be your new default units when you turn it on kgs you could do that and if you're gonna use a kg weight and you everything you're gonna do is kgs and put kgs but for most people LB is fine press hold and you want it to say F5 and 6. There are different F5 settings, but F5 and 6 lets you do custom weight. Because if you use the other F5 settings, you don't have much control over the capacity or the divisions or any of that stuff. So keep pressing units until you see F5, 6. Press hold. DP should be at 0. You can press the units button to make that to 0. You don't need any decimal places on a floor scale. D1, that's how it's the counting by. So in this case, it's going to be one pound accurate because it puts zero decimal places. A 5,000 pound floor scale like this, it could be a 2x2 two two or 4x4. Four four. It's going to have one pound accurate and no decimals. If you had a 10,000 pound floor scale, then you'll set this to 2. Because it's 10,000 pounds divided by 2, that's 5,000 divisions. So you want two pound accurate. But in this case, it's a 5x2, five uh, two two, uh, 5k floor scale, so one pound accurate. So you want it to be one pound cap this is your capacity so you see I put 5,000 you can move this over pressing the zero button and you press the unit button to go down right so you're gonna make it to five and you're gonna keep going left and if you went over the number you're trying to go just keep pressing zero and you'll cycle back so you want to say zero zero five thousand if you have ten thousand you want to say zero zero or zero ten thousand minus five thousand so that's fine now press load. So this is what I'm going to use for actual calibration. How much weight I'm going to use. So it says 44 pounds currently. So I'm going to use my body weight of 163 pounds. So down with the units button. Zero move left. Make that to six. I missed it. See, so I could just keep going. And I'm using my body weight because I'm going to stand on it. 163 pounds. And I'm roughly one pound accurate when I test it with a different scale. So that's what we recommend. Or if you have another test weight, at least 10% of the max capacity, but you could go less. Recommend it to go at least 100 pounds because if you go too light of a calibration weight, let's say you use 50 pounds, and you're normally weighing something that's three, 4,000 pounds, it's going to be less and less accurate. So the farther away you go from the calibration weight, the less accurate it's going to be. That's what we recommend 10% of the max capacity for that reason. So 10% of 5,000 would be 500. So we use 1,000 pounds here when we calibrate because that's about 20% of 5,000 or if it's 10,000 that's about 10%, it's just 1,000. But I'm just going to use a body weight for now and this is get pretty close and you're normally weighing maybe 1,000, 2,000 pounds. It might not be too far off if you're accurate, your body weight within one pound. So this is my body weight. Cal on, that's good. So no load. So make sure the scale is clear, not yonder. It's going to zero out the scale. Right? It's all clear. Add load. This is when you add your weight to the scale. So in my case, I'm just going to stand on it. I'm standing near the center if I can. And press hold. Cal end. So let me step off of it. You see cal end. So now remove the weight from the scale. In my case, I just got off scale. So that's good. Press hold. Count it back up. Zero pounds. That's good. If you don't see zero, you might need to turn it off and turn it back on. Because if they had the weight still on there and you turned it off and on, it's going to zero out the weight. So 
that should be zero. And if I stun on it, there it is. It's 164, 163, one pound accurate. That's fine. So if you're getting weights that's off, let's say it's off by a couple pounds, when you use heavier weights, then you should use a heavier weight during calibration process. You could do the whole process again. It t t sometimes it takes a second try, but more dependent on getting enough weight, the heavier the better and more accurate it is. If you still get error 6, you can use, then we need to check checking the wiring. So I do have a separate video on how to check or how to fix the floor scale. So I'm not going to go too much over it like the load cells and testing, but at least let's check the wiring. That's very important. So if, and you can have a unit off. This is for a 902. So the, the same with 900. You see the cable goes down here. You remove your two screws here and you'll see a black box or stainless steel box called a junction box. You're going to remove those four screws and you're going to see all the wiring in here for the four different load cells and the home run cable. So this is an overhead view of the junction box after I remove the lid. So one, two, three, four. Those are the four load cells. So remember your feet, you have four feet and they screw in to a load cell. So this wire, you see this one is for that corner that one for that corner, I think. Even you could rotate it, for example. Maybe it's not a correct rotation, but you know. There's four of these, and the fifth one is the cable that goes out to the 902. This could be a 900, doesn't really matter. You can switch this 902 to a 900 by changing this home run cable, by removing these four wires, getting a new cable, and actually have one right here, and connect it to a 900 indicator. If you want to switch it out or to a 901, whatever, but if you want to stick with the 902, and that's fine, then you go through here. So, what you want to do is tug on each cable and see if you have any wire that's loose in there. So, you see a little screw here, you can screw them down clockwise, and you're going to check if they're all in the correct order. So, if you look closely, mine are, you'll see EXC plus is the red cable, that's the first one. SIG plus, and you might need to go here, green, then the shield is a yellow cable, this cable doesn't have the shield, yellow cable, then SIG minus is white, and EXC minus is the black cable. So you check that for all of them, you see they're all in the correct order, so you can check all those, and make sure they're all tight. If you see some of these like this, where you see the metal tip of the cable still sticking out, like it's not all the way in, you could loosen this counterclockwise, jam the cable more in as much as you can. You need two hands, easier. And screw it down, make sure it's tight. Check all these wires, these are very important because even one loose wire could be causing a error 6 or use or ends error. So you check all those, and if this doesn't fix the problem, and then it might be a load cell issue, might not. But first, what's important about these 902s. So we are slowly phasing out the 902s, but if you still have them, just realize these 902s are very basic. They only give weight readings. And what I mean by that is, they, they have kind of known for having memory issues. So if you had your 902 for maybe two or three years and it doesn't turn on properly or a lot of fluctuation or it just doesn't want to turn on anymore, it could be possible that the 902 has gone bad. These typically I've seen them last two or three years and then start having issues. The most random issues, you can try fixing it but there's no real repairs for it because the main board itself is bad. And we don't have parts for these. So at that point you have a choice to yeah, after two or three years, replace it with a new 902, or you could just replace it with a 900, for example. And that's what the NTEP floor scales come with. So you just change out the ho the cable with this new cable for the 900. It has a five pin connector on it, and get the 900 indicator, which you could purchase through us. So that's the biggest problem with the 902 is that they're known to go bad. The 900 does have a problem. I've seen them last for 10 years without a problem. 902s, two or three years, they start having issues, need to be replaced. So in the long run, it might cost you more money having 902 because you might have to replace it after a couple years. But if it's within the one year purchase, then you can always just 
call us, warranty replacement, it will send you a new 902. That's not an issue. That's for free of charge. But if, let's say you replace the 902, or you don't think it's a 902 issue, or maybe try a different indicator, then it could be one of the load cells, or the junction box is bad. Maybe water got in here, maybe one of the load cells itself is bad, because that's all it is to a floor scale. You have a junction box with this green card called J card. All the wires meet up here, and the load cells in each corner. So it's either bad jun junction box, or this J card specifically, or the load cells are bad. So that's what the other video, how to fix the floor scale, is for. And it's going to be the same process, you need the same indicator, but with 902, it's just going to be only calibrating, there's no C15 setting. The 900 indicator is a lot better to try to diagnose a problem at a floor scale because you could actually see the raw data, while the 902 does not. So, hopefully, it helps you out, and hopefully, it fixes your problems with your floor scale. Hopefully, it was just a calibration issue, but I recommend to calibrate, recalibrate once a year because the low cells do get deformed over time. So, it is a problem with using the floor scale, depending on how much you use it, more often you're going to be recalibrating. So, if you haven't recalibrated in years, might be an issue. Hopefully, it's not 902 is going bad, but just know that it typically lasts two or three years before it needs to be replaced. And that'll be all, and hopefully, it's all the issue. Thank you. Bye.